Fat Guy Flies RC coming to you from the man cave. All right, now we're going to do an updated unboxing build and radio setup for the ever famous Arrows Bigfoot. Now I know I've had several, I've had two Bigfoots, and this will be my third. Um, Arrows RC sent me out a new one, a plug and play, so that I can do more a more of an updated uh, assembly, unbox assembly, and then how to set up the vector system and the uh, radio, the uh, receiver I'll be using is an AR620 Spectrum uh, antennaish receiver, which is absolutely perfect for this plane. Now, you could also use a um, motion, the one from Motion RC, the Limit RX Gen 2 7 channel receiver with a bind button and other thing. You can use that also. That's about a $17, $18 receiver. Um, but you may already have um, but I do also suggest using uh, AR620. Either one, it just as long as you have at least six channels and a good solid range. So we're going to go with the AR620 because that's what I have on hand right now. And as with all Arrow's products, everything is absolutely packed beautifully. Make sure you check every little nook and cranny. Um, like that was in there and that's hiding all of our nuts and bolts and our, our goodies. This may be a little bit longer of a video because we're going to build the video, we're going to unbox it, we're going to build it, and we're going to do the radio setup all in one video. So it may take a little bit longer, but you could just pretend that I'm Brian Phillips. <laughs> no offense, Brian. All right. Well, you do have to cut a few things, and like all these Arrow products, the wing, perfect, um, absolutely, you can, I mean you can see the individual cells, but you can't feel them, you can't feel them at all, struts are already hooked up for you, while we're here, since we're going to be building this, let's go ahead and cut these little zip ties on the, on the wires. I'll have to find my tool for that. Okay. Nice wing spar. Okay. Like I said, everything is absolutely protected. Flap and aileron servos are already hooked up for you. Now here's something I don't like. The manual is folded, which that is upsetting to me. The nice foam pinch hinge, but it does have laminate in it, so we don't have to worry about reinforcing this now. But later on, you would want to come back and do the hold the, fo hold the foam um, mod, which is just a, it's like Elmer's glue on steroids. You just put a thin bead actually on the uh, on the on the uh, hinge itself, and that gives you a layer of protection. It does the same function as um, blender and tape. Take the fuselage out of here. Yeah, this was nice. My my bigfoot I have now is really beat up, and. Uh, paint's all chipped off. You're going to want to give this a clear coat of polyacrylic um, because it is a water-based paint and, it, and as you take this hatch on and off, on and off, your fingernails are going to eat up the sides there. Have the Velcro and XT60 connector. So I've got a thing of Velcro in there. Taped double-sided Velcro. I'm going to go ahead and remove that Velcro. Not the whole thing, just the just the fuzzy, the fuzzy part. Good strong Velcro strap to hold your battery down. You're going to want to run a good size, a good 2200 to 2700, maybe even a 3000, 3S in this plane. Alright, 
we're going to reposition that Velcro strap. I'm going to redo the Velcro strap um, because it is actually interfering with the battery strap itself. So we'll redo that. It was interfering with this battery strap, so they didn't take their time to really uh, do a good job of that. You can see the vector system is already installed. Now this is one of the reasons why I'm saying use an AR620 or the uh, Limit RX Gen 2 set, uh, 7 channel because you do not want, you've already paid for the vector system. That is the, the control board, the, the stabilization of the aircraft. It has all the different levels and and you don't want one gyro to fight with another gyro. That's why you would use a, a non-gyroed receiver like the AR620. Okay. Where are those crimpers I was looking for? <coughs> yeah, see? There's a Y stuck down in there. You'll need that for your wings. Anyway, I'm going to do a little more get this out. Oh, there it all comes out. Okay. There's the uh, horizontal stabilizer, otherwise known as rudder. Or, I'm sorry, vertical stabilizer. Nice laminate hinge on there. Landing gear. So there's something I need to show you about the landing gear that you need to do. All right. Let's get all of our three here. Try to keep up with it. All right. Now, on your landing gear, and this is important because, like I said, this is my third Bigfoot, and the wheels are famous for coming off. After you be out running around a couple of times, you had a couple of flights, and you notice that your wheel it just comes off. Make sure that this hub is tight. I'm going to take probably a two, two millimeter hex drive. Now, two millimeter hex drive is what you're going to be using, I think, for this entire plane, if I remember right. Make sure that that is tight. Maybe it's not. Nope, it's going to be bigger than that. Must be a 2.5. Yeah, 2.5. Make sure that's tight. Okay. What you're going to want to do. Grab yourself some needle, needle nose pliers. Grab a hold of this locking nut here, okay? And just make sure that hub is tight. And this is where it's going to fail you. Ask me how I know. When my big foot threw a shoe on me one time. So make sure those are good and tight. And if it gets to be even a, a little bit of a problem, use the exact same tools, back that out, and put you just a spot of Loctite uh, on the inside of this, on the inside of that screw right there. All right, let's start with the landing gear itself. Then put our battery hatch back on there. We don't need that right now. And it goes in the windshield in. Put your finger on the mechanism. There you go. All right, let's go ahead and start with our landing gear. Okay, remember that bag of goodies I said to make sure you pay attention to where they were? Okay. Got your antenna. This is the backing plate you're looking for right now. Okay. Now you got this little bag with your spinner, uh, prop adapter, and two uh, cotter pins, and some uh, push rods. Put that to the side. You don't need to open that up right now. And even give you a little two-sided tape for your receiver. 
All right, now, what you're looking for here are probably your medium size screws. You're gonna have probably five long screws. And those are gonna be for your wings. They're almost always gonna be for your wings. All right, there's four. Oh, there's actually, they're gonna give you six of them. They're gonna give you a few extras, so that's good. So what you're looking for though, actually you have several of the extras. You're looking for this size here. It's about half an inch long. And you're gonna need three of them. Okay. Well, I love these little magnetic trays. Okay. You are gonna need a two millimeter hex drive, which is what I'm gonna use right now. That's 1.5. millimeter hex drive. You're going to grab your landing gear. Okay. Now, it's keyed to be put together one way. You see that little nipple there? Okay. When you look on the bottom of the plane, see that little key, the way that fits? So it's only going to fit one way. All right. So you're going to line that up right in there like that. It should fit right in there. Put the, the one with the nipple you know, first little hub, little protrusion there, whatever you want to call it. Let's put that in there. Oh, wait, you know, we're screwing up already. Don't forget, you got to put that back plate in, okay? That's your back plate. It fits in the same pattern, okay, as the screws. Kind of jiggle around a little bit to get it fit nice and tight. Has a very, you've got these metal screws are going into metal housings, so you don't have to worry about this one nice and snug, nice and tight. Okay, it has a very obvious bottoming out point. Okay, okay and your landing gear is on there. And if you put them, and there's only one way to put them on, they should look right forward like that. Okay, now, so you got your tail wheel. You see you got this protrusion here. Okay, that, I got, that's my fingers controlling that. This is where you're going to pay attention. Now grab a hold, your entire assembly, entire tail assembly. It has an obvious how it fits together. Okay, it'll fit together like that, okay. See that channel there? That channel? That point there? All right. You gotta put two and two together. And all that's gonna fit together, and that's gotta go into that channel. Okay. Now see, now I put that in that channel with that rudder, see? All right, now we're going to tighten all that up. Remember, you got them long screws, right? All right. So what you got? Here's a pro tip. Get you an old pillow, okay? Get yourself an old pillow. Take your plane. And that way, you're putting pressure on that pillow, not on the top of the plane. All right. So we got two screw holes here. We're going to take two of these very long Uh oh. It came undone. Okay. So we're going to drop one in there like that. Drop another long one in there like that. Take our two millimeter hex drive. Okay. And that should go right into that top protruding part that came down from the vertical stabilizer. You're going to feel it. Yeah, I can feel it grabbing right now. Metal screw into a metal brass housing. Okay. Should have a very obvious 
There it is. Very obvious stopping point. Okay. I'm kind of looking at these seams along here in the top of this rudder to pull in tighter to the, uh, to the fuse. Yeah, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing all this get tighter and tighter as I feel that anchor now. Obvious stopping point. All right, it's not going to be. It's getting nice, nice and tight. It has an obvious stopping point. Don't push it beyond that. Okay. All right. Start to look a little bit like an airplane. All right. Now this is important. Remember, we got that little bit of play in there. This is where you're going to take one. I guess you get an extra one of the only threaded, uh, threaded, well, a threaded screw. It's a little bitty Phillips head screwdriver. And what this is, this helps secure that in place. You'll see a hole right there. Okay. That hole right there, you're going to screw this in that way. So for that, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. I do recommend that you use a magnetic tip. Okay. And all that does is that takes that slop, that play out of there. Okay. All right. Now, let me show you what happened there was, remember that screw went in there. As you can see, I don't know if you can really see it or not. If you look up in there, yeah, if you look closely, see my finger? You kind of see that upward, where that screw went in there and crossed over the top of the top of that peg that was holding the rudder and then just locked it all down there nice and in place there. So now we got our rudder hooked up, we got our elevator hooked up, okay? We got our landing gear hooked up. So let's take pull our attention to the wings. We're not actually going to attach the wings just yet. What we're going to do right now, we're going to undo carefully you got your little bundle of wires that are labeled, okay? Carefully cut the white zip tie that's holding everything together. Be careful, don't cut a wire. Okay, this is where you're going to need to take some care. Don't be in a hurry. Make sure you don't cut any wire. If you do, you're going to have a dickens of a time. Go ahead and take these wires, take your fingers, and kind of stretch them out a little bit, okay? Stretch them out. Pull them nice and straight. I like to pull them through, hold it with one end down at the base, and then pull it through with my fingers. Okay, hold it at the base, and then pull it tight. And that'll help straighten them wires out, okay? be a lot easier to deal with. I'm going to do the same process over here. We're going to be very careful how we cut that zip tie. Okay. That's just to make it nice and neat. See, I'm going to grab a wire. Okay. I'm going to grab it at the base. Pull it straight. Do the same thing to all of them. And what you've got here is you've got a aileron. You've got a flap, and you've got a light down here at the end. Okay, and that's what those three wires are. Set your wing off to the side. Okay? Now, notice that is labeled flap. That's that, that zip tie. Don't lose that. Okay? Now, inside your, your model, okay? You're going to see this thing here. It's going to have little, uh, little bitty prong looking things. All right. This is your light controller. Okay. 
let that drape outside. Okay. And then you've got all these wires that are coming out the front of the vector system. They're all labeled. One is labeled throttle, elevator, aileron, rudder. Okay. And then S bus. You're saying, what about flap? Flap is the only thing that doesn't go through the vector system. So now is the time when you're going to take your spectrum receiver or whatever receiver. Real quick, I will pause and get the other receiver. Pause for just a second. Okay, I'm back. This is the other receiver I'm talking about. It is the Lemon RX Gen 2 7 channel. You could also use this one. Now, this does not have a gyro or anything in it. It is no different than the AR620, other than that this is 6 channel, this is 7 channel, but you only need a 6 channel to run this. Now, there is something about Bigfoot if you wanted to use it. If you look closely, Look up in there. I don't know if you can kind of see it. Let's see if I can dig out that throttle. If you look at the throttle cable that's going directly into the vector, okay, on that throttle cable, it has a little yellow pigtail. Okay? And it's fished through there. If you look at my, this is the, uh, okay, this is the throttle cable, okay. This is coming from the ESC and going into the back of the vector. This is one of the things they don't advertise. And if you look down there, you see that little black, uh, that little black peg hanging off by itself right there. See, I'm just touching it right now. You think, well, what is that? That is thrust reverse should you chose to, to use it. What you would have to do, you would have to unplug it from the vector, the entire throttle cable, peel that black bit away a little bit to give you a little bit of uh, room, and then you'd run your throttle directly to your receiver. However, this is where you'd want the seven channel because you're going to need that sixth channel to run the vector system. They had to, for the beginner mode or stabilized mode, for the optimized mode, which is AS3X or wind mitigation, and then no gyro, which is complete no gyro off, you know, just you in the, in the plane. If you want to be able to have those three levels, you have to make a choice. Do I want thrust reversing or do I want to use the vector system, okay? If you choose an AR620, because you'll have to have that, you, know, you, have to, you have to have one or the other, you can't have both. But if you have a seven channel receiver, you can now run your throttle directly to this and then on the seven channel, plug that little pigtail into the top of the receiver and program it on the two position or three position switch of your choice to turn to reverse thrust the ESC. Now, I'm not suggesting doing that because you're gonna to have to unplug the, the throttle from the back of the vector. The vector's placed. If you you pull that out wrong, you may unlodge the vector. You'll have to anchor it back now. This plane slows down plenty. It does not need thrust reversing. However, if you were to put it on floats, then I would highly recommend doing that because backing up when you're on floats, get up out of the weeds and stuff, would be very advantageous. But for my purposes, the AR620 is perfect. Six channel. I don't need thrust reversing, so I don't need to use this one. I'm going to use the AR620 instead. And that's what most people are probably going to be using anyways. <coughs> Excuse me. I just want to put that receiver away. All right, so now you're going to take your AR620 receiver. Remember, all the little front wires are coming out of the front of the vector system. They're all labeled, okay? With a spectrum receiver, you're always going to put, you're always going to be putting Throttle first with channel one. Now, if you look on a spectrum receiver, you say, well, there's also channel zero, the very top one. That's for programming, okay? Channel one, so you have zero, and then you have one, the two, three, and four, and five, and six. 
okay? So there's actually seven places, that's not seven channels. So you're gonna put channel one, and then the, t the light part of your servo lead always goes towards the top of the receiver. Aileron is next, so it goes, it goes throttle, then it goes aileron, and then you're gonna put an elevator, okay? Think of like tear, T-A-E-R, throttle, elevate, throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, and then rudder, okay? And then I'm gonna take this one that says S-Bus, and I'm gonna put that in channel five, which where you normally would have your gear, your channel A or your gear channel, okay? And then I'm gonna find that flap, um, pigtail we talked about, and we'll lay, put that in there, and that's going to be in channel six. So when you're all done, the way it should look, when you're all done putting your receiver, the way it should look is like that. All the yellow wires are on top, okay? Flap all the way down to throttle, throttle all the way back to flap. And that's how that should look right there, okay? Now, If you dig down in here, you're going to find two wires that are not labeled, okay? Okay, you're going to find two pigtails that have these little clamps on. Those are not wired. Those are going to hook up to your ailerons, okay? These two that are labeled flap out of the back of the receiver now are going to hook to the flaps, okay? And then you're going to take this, this thing here that had the light controller, and that plugs into the two black, black and red connectors on the, uh, for the lights, okay? So now you're going to want to, this is where you're going to want to go ahead and let's bind up the airplane. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're just going to make a very basic profile. We're not worried about direction or, or expo or anything like that. All we're going to do is make a basic plane. Okay. Okay. Got to create a new model. Add a new model. Okay. Let me move this camera just a little bit. Okay. We're going to create a new model. Okay, model type, which I don't know why you have to do this, but okay, yes, it's a model. We're going to go ahead and name it A R R O W S. We went out here space. Okay. B, uh, oh, shoot, I'm going to go back, back, not B, J, I want B, I, okay, B, I, G, F, oh, I can't believe I did that again. named arrows Bigfoot. I've only got one arrows Bigfoot. Okay, now here's the important aircraft type. This is where you got to get specific. Instead of just saying normal wing, you're going to change this to one aileron and one flap. Okay, now while you're here, go ahead, pick yourself an image. Go down to standard image. Go up. Hit it. And then just go through until you see something that you kind of think reminds you of Bigfoot. There we go. Okay. And we're going to back back out of there. Okay.
All right, back back out of there. Let me grab a battery real quick that I've already got charged. Well, it's not completely charged up, but it'll work for this purpose. Now we're going to take, we're going to get in, don't have the prop on, so that's important. You don't want to have the prop on the shop if you can all afford it. We're going to take battery, hook it up. Okay, this is the part where you're going to hit the bind button. See it's flashing. The same procedure if you were using the uh, Limit RX Gen 2, you hit the bind button on that one and do the exact same thing. You're going to come over here, okay, go down to function list, go down until you see bind, or whatever, uh, whatever procedure your transmitter does, this is mine, okay. Hear that? All right, you hear that sound, that beep, that was the sound? of the ESC initializing. So, don't have the prop on. Okay, and, the pro and it's going this way, so we're going right there. So now I know I have, I see, I hear them servos moving back there. So I know I've got communication. Don't have the prop, I don't have the prop on. Go ahead, unplug this real quick. Put the battery out to one side, all right. Transmitter, get it out of the way. Okay. All right, now this is where you kind of have to get creative in how you hold stuff. All right, let's take get our wing spar. Let me move this back just a touch. Okay, grab our wing spar. Right. We're gonna slide wing spar in there like that. Okay, make sure those wires are hanging down the underside. Grab your other wing. Okay. Join your wings together. Get them together, man. Get them together. Okay. You're not going to do anything more than just kind of hold them together. Now, this is where you're going to have to get creative. Okay. And how you hold it. I like to take the wing. You've got enough room here. Okay. I'm going to have to hold all this together as I try to hook this stuff up. Okay, now, go ahead, just kind of, you know, one wing spar is there. Just do the best you can, okay, however way you can do this. Maybe I have to do it this way. you got to remember trying to put this together and film it to where you can see what I'm doing at the same time is kind of a, an, is, an issue. All right. Take our flap, remember that flap? Uh, well, I'm gonna make sure you can see what I'm doing. All right, just kind of, this would be great if you could have someone hold the wing for you. All right, remember we got that pigtails labeled flap. All right, well, looky there, that's labeled flap. And always put pol polarity, light to light, dark to dark. So see the, the light side is over here, the light side is on this side. I'm gonna go ahead, fit them together, okay? Grab my other flap, labeled flap, and the other wing. Uh, this is the problem. Try to hold this together. Okay, you'll feel those click in. Okay. Let me let this fall down here. Okay. So we can still kind of we can still kind of tell what I'm doing. Alright, now we're gonna find. Remember I said we're gonna find these pigtails that were not labeled. Okay. That weren't labeled, those are your ailerons. They're coming directly out of the back side of the vector. So we're gonna grab the the uh, wire off one wing that's not labeled. You know, the one thing is they're not labeled. And you'll find, you put all these models together, the wires in the wings that are not labeled nine times out of 10 are your ailerons. Okay, 
light to light, light to light, dark to dark. Let me find my other one. Okay. There's the unlabeled one. Where's my other pigtail? Trying to film. Okay, there it is. Okay. It's the one that's not labeled. It's your light to light, dark to dark. Okay. Now my ailerons are hooked up. So now, all I have left is this, these lights. All right. Now, see this little, doesn't matter which side you do. Okay. Same thing, same principle, light to light, dark to dark. Okay, that's going to fit it in there just like that. Don't, don't pay attention to this label gear. That's just them using this pigtail. Okay. Oh, man, come on. Stay with me. Stay with me. Okay. All right, so now if we go recap everything, everything is hooked together. The two, the these wires here for your light, for your uh, lights are hooked up. The red is with the red, the black is with the black. So light to light, dark to dark. The unlabeled pigtails are going to your ailerons. And then the labeled ones that say flap are going to flaps. So everything is now hooked up okay so now and everything is hooked up the way it's supposed to be so here's the one little point we need to do now we'll set that off the side and we're going to secure our um, receiver you don't want to it's just I mean yes it's a non gyro receiver so it's not necessary to have it in any one certain spot but you want to, you don't want your receiver flopping around here because it might bounce around and hit a wire and unplug something. It might be something like your elevator or throttle, and now you've got this nice little boat anchor falling out of the sky. And you're thinking, what happened? What happened? Well, because you didn't secure your receiver. And you're already bound, so now you can hook this wing up. You don't have to, you know, this is why I bound it now without hooking up the wing because how am I going to get to this receiver? You know, and try to hit that bind button when it's underneath the wing. So, I like using double-sided gorilla tape. Let me just kind of bear with me for just a minute. I'm going to find me a nice spot up in there on the side. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now I've got that receiver bound, or see see it right there, that little box to the side. All right, now I can go ahead, let my struts fall. That's those. That's what those are, struts. Okay, actually kind of push them away, away from you, because you don't want to bind them on the table. Make sure all your wires are falling freely into there. Nothing's getting pinched, nothing's getting bound. Okay, and then I'm going to fit my wing. Now, remember them long screws, okay? I don't like how this wing has a gap. I'm hoping that when I anchor all this down, that gap will disappear. It should. It should. where you might want to pick your model up. That's a good sound. Believe it or not, that is a good sound. You see how that was starting to kind of dent in? That's what I'm looking for. As soon as that starts denting in, I don't want to go any deeper. See that that gap right there is disappearing. And when I start seeing this plastic here dent in on the foam, I know. All right, not going to go any tighter than that. That wing is on there. Now, 
Because hopefully, that, if I anchor that down, hopefully that gap will stay, stay gone like that. We're already at the 40 minutes part <laughs> point. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, that's in there good. Now, see that's already disappeared a little bit. Tight fitting model is a is a precise model. All right, that's on there. Okay, now here is an experience point that I have found with the Bigfoot. Here is an, a a point that I have found to make assembly of Bigfoot a whole lot easier. Okay, let's back this up a little bit. Okay, remember we have this thing here and them two cotter pins that are in there. They're like oh, sometimes called body clips. On, uh, you guys have RC cars. Okay. Alright. This is where you're going to hook up these struts. Do yourself a huge favor. Get yourself a pair of pliers or something. Where my needle nose at? Right here. Okay. Take these little clips, okay? And you're gonna to wanna to kinda of bend them out just a little bit. Okay. You want to bend them out just a little bit where they're not quite so tight, okay? The reason is, is because they are, these pins are such a pain in the katukas to get through the bottom of that strut there. Okay? And I'll show you what I mean here in just a minute. So you have kind of bend them out just a little bit. Okay. Now here, the strut. See that protrusion right there? I'm going to push up on the wing. Kind of bend that whole strut in there and let that just kind of fit on there. Okay? Now, here's what you got to try to do. See that little bitty hole right there? Okay? You got to fit this through there and get it to. See? It's, it's on there very tight and pop right back up. But I've got it just tight enough for where it's going to hold. So take a pair of needle nose pliers, get a good grip on it, okay, and you're going to want to fit that in there, I'm not going to use pliers, it's going to have to, like I say, this is kind of a pain in the butt, but once it gets in there, it pops in and that little, that little uh, bend in there holds it in place. Now you can put it all the way through or either direction, but either way, it's not going anywhere. Okay? Here's you're going to take the other wing, the other strut. Okay? You're going to kind of bend the wing out just a little bit. Get that to line up in there. Take your pin, your cotter pin, your body clip, whatever you want to call it. Okay? Now that one went on it well. Okay, that one went well. All right. So don't lose those. I mean, that's in there. So here's what something we can do to prevent that from coming back out. I mean, this is a small enough plane. You shouldn't have to take the wings off. But see, see these two ends here? See those two ends there? I'm going to kind of bend them together. Kind of prevent that from... See, I kind of bent those two ends together there. Okay, we'll do the same thing on this side. To kind of make it easier, harder for them to come, to come out. 
Just remember, it's kind of sharp, so don't get your fingers stuck. All right, now, we already know, because we bound everything up, that my rudder servo, okay, and my aileron servo are already centered, so I don't have to worry about that. They're centered. Both of your control arms here are exactly the same length. Okay, now let me see what the instructions say on where they want you to put these things. But I certainly don't remember. I make mine for maximum deflection because I like to have as much control as possible. Okay, it looks like on the outer hole on, on both. So, okay, so on the elevator, it's going to be in on the next end hole for the elevator, and on the rudder, looks like it's going to be outer to outer. Okay. All right. So let's hook up our rudder. Okay, you see your arm of your rudder. You're going to fish, take your fuel wire, push that back, okay. fit that through the outer hole. Okay. Just let me push this back just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. All right, there's the end of my rudder, right? Right there is what I'm hooking it to. Our hole. And that looks like that's not perfect. If I leave it that way, look how that's not lined up. So let me undo that. And that's going to need to go, I have to make it shorter. So it's going to go in. We'll go in a couple turns in. Okay. And then put that back on there. Okay. Still not right. So, a couple more times. There. That's lined up. Basically perfect. All right, so now I'm going to click that, click into place, and slide that fuel tubing back over, and that's how that should look when you're all done. The fuel tubing is back up over the end there, but not all the way down. The very top of your push rod is the t very top hole on your uh, actually on uh, your rudder, and uh, you're the very last hole on the control arm of the rudder. Now let's go around here to the elevator. Okay. Grab our, and it said to go to the second hole in on the arm of the servo arm. So the very top one is up close. You're gonna go down one. Okay. See how that lines up. Now, what I'm paying attention to here is see see that right there. I want that to stay lined up. So, as I push that fuel tubing down, okay. all right. And if I put that on that on that one there, that very bottom one, if I push that through there, look what happens to that elevator. See what happens to the elevator? It's up too high. So, I need to make the control arm shorter. So I'm going to turn it in a few times. It's better to go in and make it shorter than try to make it longer because you don't want to get to your outermost extension of your clevis and that, and then not have a positive effect. And that is what I'm looking for. That looks perfect. So now I can hit that, clamp that in place, slide that fuel tubing back up over there, and now, that is nice, okay? We're getting there, we are getting there. All right, our rudder, our, everything is hooked up now. Okay, we left our transmitter on, okay? Go ahead, 
put our battery back in there. Okay. That's a good sound. All right. Now we can proceed to setting this bad boy up. All right. Look. Lights are flashing. Okay. Okay, so we know we got the lights hooked up correctly. Okay. All right. Let's see what we got. Ailerons work. Elevator works. Rudder works. Okay. So, let's get where you can see it. Where you can see the control surfaces. And let's make sure they're going the right way. So, what about your flaps? We're not worried about flaps. Okay, so right aileron? That's wrong. If I go right aileron, then that aileron should be lifting. Or let's look at our elevator. Okay, elevator comes up. If I pull it up elevator to go up, that elevator should tip, tip up for me. And it is. All right. Rudder. Oh, if I want right rudder, that rudder should be going that way. But instead, it's going to the left. Okay, so we know those are all wrong. Well, the only thing right is the elevator. So let's go in there and let's go ahead and get that fixed. You're going to go to servo setup. You're going to go to travel. And we get to reverse, okay? Aileron, hit that. Elevator was fine. Rudder was wrong. Hit that. Get back out of there. Now, watch the aileron. Right aileron. It goes up. Okay, elevator correct. Rudder should go to the right. And it does. Okay, so now we know that all the main control services for this plane are working correctly. Let's go ahead and go to our flap system. Okay, we want to pick this switch here, D. So now I've highlighted D, okay. All right, while we're here, we're going to go ahead and take that to a two-second deployment. Not three seconds, a two-second. Now let's go up for the flap up position. Flaps all the way up. So they're not doing anything because I put no values in here. Okay, so let's find which way this works. Let's try positive no because i as i'm making it go positive then flaps are going further down so i know i need to go the other direction and what i want to do more than likely be a negative 100 and it is look those flaps are all the way up so if i go to the next position down they drop okay so when i put them back up now we're going to go to takeoff flaps. And let's leave that at zero for now. Leave that at zero for now. And let's take this landing flaps. And let's make that positive 25. Okay. Now, takeoff flaps are positive zero. Okay. That's an awful lot. And then landing is positive 25%. Not much difference. So I don't think landing flaps need to be, I think they need to be a negative 50. Let's go with negative 25 for now. All right. That's takeoff. And then that's landing. Okay. Now, what I like to do with high wing planes for an elevator to flap mix for takeoff, I'm going to go a positive 5% down elevator. And then for landing, I'm going to do positive 10%. Okay? We're already at 2% deployment. Now, if you look carefully on the elevator, when I put takeoff flaps, you should see the elevator go down just a touch. It almost, almost can't see it. And then and with the landing flaps, it went down even more. Alright, so let me put it right here. Pay attention. You know what? That's wrong. Oh, I know what's going on. Okay. Alright. 
don't know if you're able to see that elevator, but that elevator is moving ever so slightly. All right. Now, everything is working in the right direction. The flaps are the way I want them to be. Let's go out of this model and let's look at that vector. Okay, we're going to set that vector. So you're going to want to go system setup. Yes, don't worry about the model. It's not going anywhere. This is where you're going to go to channel assign. Okay. Now, gear is A. Remember, we plugged that S bus into the A switch. All right. Well, I want a, I want, and that is a two position switch. I want that on a three position switch. Now, for me, myself, I like using B as my, any kind of a gyro or flight modes. I like using B. It's a three position switch. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go down here to gear, and I'm going to change gear to B, okay? And auxiliary 2, I'm just going to inhibit that. I don't need it, okay? Inhibit that one, okay? Auxiliary 1 has already been reserved for flaps. So my gear, I change it to B, aux 1, this flap is already reserved. That's why it says NA. Okay. And then I'm going to inhibit auxiliary 2. Just because I don't need it. Now, I want to make sure that gear is gear. Aux 1 is flap. Aux 2 is aux 2, but I'm not using it. Now, if I had that 7 channel, this is where I'd be doing that thrust reversing. Okay. And assign it to a switch. All right. So now... I have the different levels. Okay, I hit B in the zero position, or it was the furthest away, and look what happened to the elevator. That tells me this plane is wanting to self right. Look at that. Look at that aileron. I'm going to do it from the rear. Look at that aileron. See how hold it's holding position. Aileron is holding position. The elevator is holding position, that would self-right the plate. So that tells me that the B switch in the furthest away, position zero, is safe. Now, if I go to the middle, everything came back. I bet you that is the no gyro mode. You don't hear anything. All right, now let's take it to the second position. I bet you I hear gyros now. Yep. Hear gyros. Now, yeah, hear the gyros? Okay. So now I know that if I take my B switch and I go all the way to zero, all the way down to position zero, that that is self-level or stability mode in the vector system. If I go to the middle position, that is no gyro or direct mode. In other words, nothing between you, it's just you. The transmitter of the plane, direct control, no orientation help, no leveling help, no help from, from the wind gyro, just you and the plane. But then if I go towards me, position two on my B switch, then that gives me the optimized mode, which is wind mitigation or in the spectrum world, AS3X, okay? <coughs> now, you're thinking, oh, well, that's fine and dandy. All right, let's look at this now. All right, we now know that everything is working in the right direction. We've got our flap set up, everything is set up. Let's talk about rates, okay? And how much we want stuff to travel. Now, when you're in safe, your rates are set. I mean, you, you can go in there and increase your channel and all that if you want to, but I don't mess with that. I leave safe or, or their stability mode. I let them use their presets their throws, and I don't mess with that. In gyro and no gyro or direct mode, do what you want. AS3X, you can do it one or optimized mode, do what you want. So here's the rates that I'm going to pick. All right. And here you go to rates and expo. Okay. Now, if I want to use dual rates or a mid rate, a high rate, a low rate, then I'd be assigning a, a three position switch for high rate, mid rate, and low rate. However, with this plane here, I'm going to run it at 100% throws with 30% expo all the way around. 
So I don't have to assign it to a switch. So I leave that to switch on. Okay. Go to uh, rudder. Make it a 30% expo. Okay. Then I'm going to go back to elevator. 30% expo. And leave it on the switch on. Okay. So now I've got 100% throws on the elevator, on the aileron, and on the rudder, okay, on a set rate. I've got my flaps set up the way I want to, okay, and uh, the other thing you're going to want to do is set yourself a timer. Now this plane here, on a uh, good size, like a 20, 2200 to a 3000. Set yourself a timer. Go down the timer. Okay. And I'm going to do it at five and a half minutes. Okay. And here's where I like changing all these to voice. 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 Voice, voice. Now this one I like voice and vibe. Voice, and then here's where I go, the very fourth screen, and I inhibit all these. Because otherwise you hear this constant annoying beeping sound. All right, so everything's out of there. Now while you're here, hit this. Well, oh, hold on. Hit this. See, it went to change to 50%. Take it up to, and now you'll hear your volume. Oh, wait, I'm getting half deaf, so that's important. All right. Now we've talked about, we've got everything model all set up. Okay, got the battery in there where we want it. Now we're going to talk about CG. There is one peripheral that you'll need to glue on. It has a very obvious point right there. And that just glues right in there like that. If you want, you know, leave it in there. And then when you're not flying, take it out and poke it inside somewhere. Carry it around. Because it will get, anytime you're, you know, you fall over or nose over or whatever, that antenna's going to get constantly get bent up and, and bent. Like my last one looks horrible. And that's going to happen. So I may just leave that antenna, actually leave it off. I mean, it's a nice scale detail, but it's not going to, in any way uh, take away from the flying of the plane so I mean you could get fancy and maybe put just a magnet in there or something magnetize it and make it stay but I just soon leave it like that take it out put it inside the canopy somewhere and what you just do there is the inside structure poke your little hole shove that in there and that way you won't lose it and carry it with you all right Talk about putting on the prop now. <coughs> you take your prop off. You're going to take the bladed part because it's going to turn this way. Slide the prop on. Okay. You're going to take that prop adapter. Oh, wait, wait, I'm doing this wrong. Forgot. Got your spinner, okay? Look on the back of the uh, spinner plate. See how it has a hexagon shape? That's going to fit, and this has a hexagon shape on the front of the prop adapter. That fits right on there, only fits on there in one way. Prop on. Okay, put your prop adapter on there. Okay, take your tool that you've been using. And you're going to just make that nice and good and tight, but not so tight that you strip it. 
that's one of those things that you can't be you can't be taught. You just have to figure that out on your own. And this is where you're going to take your spinner, the last threaded screw, and you have the smaller threaded screws. We'll go through the top of the prop adapter. Take that tool that you just used, get a hold of it. Good. There we go. Give me some tape. Okay, put that there. And you now have, after all is said and done, you have one extra screw of each of the screws. You had your little sharp, only Phillips head screwdriver, an extra one for the back of that rudder. You got one long wing bolt and one low, one long landing gear bolt left over. Okay. Whatever your prop is on, you're inside. Okay, remember we did that throttle cut? Throttle cut off. Oh, no, I didn't do a throttle cut. All right, let me show you how to do a throttle cut. Thought I did. All right, you're going to go to, you're going to go to your function list, okay? Throttle cut. Highlight it, and then pick, I like H. So I've got that highlight, because see it's, it's flashing? Pick H. Okay, all right, so with the H, the, the close to me, throttle's not working. Away from me. Okay, now this is important, okay? Hold your model. Pay attention to where your throttle position is. If you barely move it and get an immediate thrust, immediate response from the throttle, your ESC is calibrated. Now, if you were able to raise it up almost a third of the way before your throttle was to uh, engage, then you need to calibrate your ESC. So, let's just, it won't hurt to do it again. I don't need to do it, but I'm going to show you how to do it in case, because your ESC may not be calibrated. Make sure your throttle cuts on so your prop don't work. Okay? Take your hatch off. Unplug your flight battery. You have no power whatsoever, okay? Throttle cut off. Turn your throttle all the way up. Trust me, okay? Plug it in. All right, heard them two beeps. As soon as you hear those two fast beeps, pull your, you notice what I did? I pulled the throttle all the way down, okay? I now have a throttle cut. Now that way, had your ESC not been calibrated, where you had that third of movement before you were able to, before you had the throttle move, now it has immediate response. You immediately have response from the throttle. So now I know that my ESC is calibrated. And that is the same calibration process for anything. I haven't seen one that doesn't work that way. All right. Now. And the reason I'm leaving, I got throttle cut on. The reason I'm leaving the, thro the prop on and the battery's in there right now is we're going to talk about CG. The one most overlooked and probably the most important thing of any aircraft is your center of gravity. So we've got to make sure that where we've got that battery and where that thing is that she balances on. Because <coughs> if the CG is not right, she's either going to fly tail heavy or she's going to fly too nose heavy. And uh, a nose heavy plane will fly poorly. A tail heavy plane will fly once. So, make sure, so we need to look at our, find out what our factory CG is and see how far, how far on we are. Now, as typical, it's just not very far in from 60 to 70 millimeters from the leading edge of the wing. The leading edge of the wing is the front part of the wing here, okay? So, in order to measure that, you're going to need two items. You're going to need a Sharpie, some way of marking, and then you're going to need a caliper device or a ruler. And I just, that's right here in front of me, right in the front of my face. All right. Remember we said 60 to 70, okay? So I'm going to find... I'm going to find 
70 millimeters on this, and I'm going to measure that in. All right. Now, I'm going to do it on the bottom side of the wing. So, we did say 60 to 70. 60 to 70. All right, so I'm going to get my good old pillow here. Take my plane. Turn it upside down. Okay. I'm going to measure from the leading edge of the root of the wing. I'm going to put 70. Okay. And then I'm going to take my Sharpie. I'm going to make a little dot or a thumbtack or whatever you want to use for the 70 mark. Then I'm going to take my little ruler or caliper or measuring device and take it down to 60. Okay. Put that down there and make another hash mark now at the 60. So when I get done, go back to 70. Make a little hash mark here for 70. Take this down to 60. Make a little hash mark for 60. All right, then when I get done, I now have my CG range marked. If you look underneath the wings, the little black marks there. Little black marks there. That's where my CG is. So, I got my battery installed, okay, I'm going to find those two points, put my finger on it, okay, and that feels pretty good right there, but let's be very precise, okay, let's make sure, this is where you'd have to have something like, that I call, I don't know if it's going to work with these struts that I know. let's see, put that on the where that would go. I don't think it's going to work with the landing. Nah, it's not going to work. The landing gear is going to be in the way. Well, anyways, if landing gear didn't get in the way, then I could build a, and that would just rock or pivot back and forth there, and I would know that that's on the CG. But still, that's, that's pretty good. That's actually slightly nose heavy, not much, just slightly. And for this type of plane, Slightly nose heavy is okay. Now, grossly slightly, slightly nose heavy would not be good. I mean, grossly um, nose heavy would not be good. Slightly is okay. I lost the cap to my Sharpie. Now my Sharpie will dry out. And I'll have to bury it in the backyard in the shallow. Oh, there it is. Okay, no drama. I saved it. Woo! All right. Now, and I know the CG is good. So therefore, I know where I have this 2700, about a half an inch in from the front of the uh, bulkhead there, I know that's a good spot for it. I know it's going to be a good CG. If I had a 2200, slightly lighter battery, I'd go slap up against the, the bulkhead there, and I know I'd be okay. If I had a 3000, I'd go back a little bit further back. Well, folks, that is everything outside of doing audio callouts, but that's an entirely different video. Um, on the basic setup of the Bigfoot. And recap, okay, we went over CG. We went over how to, oh yeah, and trimming the plane. I showed you how to trim the tail and, and the elevator and all that's nice and perfect. Flaps are good. I showed you how to set up the flaps. I showed you how to set up CG. I showed you how to assign a channel for the vector system. <coughs> I told you about the landing gear, how sometimes the, the uh, wheels, you got to watch them wheels, make sure them hubs are nice and tight. You can use a little Loctite on the inside pins yeah, or the inside screws if need be in case you start having them back out on you. Um, I showed you a little tip about bending your little cotter pins in order to get your uh, struts in nice. And I think that's pretty much it. I mean, everything's level. We talked about rates. I'm 100% throws or 30% expo. I showed you how to do a throttle cut. I showed you how to assign a switch for your the three levels, which are beginner mode or uh, stabilized mode. Middle mode is direct mode or, or gyro, uh, no gyro. You know, it's just you direct. And then optimized mode, which is wind mitigation or AS3X. I showed you how to set that up.
So the only thing we have to do is to take this bad boy and take her up in the sky and fly her around a little bit. We'll, we'll, I'll do a demonstration of using the stabilized mode, how to fly in safe or, or stabilized mode, how to land. I'll do a demonstration with the gyro completely off, and then I'll do a demonstration with the wind mitigation. And I'll try to do pretty much the same type of flight pattern with all three flights. All right, folks, well, thank you for watching this uh, Hobby Zone. Thank you for sending me out Bigfoot for a review. And uh, thank you so much, folks. Don't forget the faith, family, and friends. And then Bigfoot, a great, one of the best flying RC planes. It's, a great, it's great for anybody. I mean, if you're a beginner, it's great for the beginner. If you're an uh, experienced pilot, you can have a lot of fun with it. It's a great second or third plane. It can be your first plane using the safe mode. And uh, AR630, AR620 uh, Spectrum Receiver, you can get it in Hobby Zone. And you can get this plane in Hobby Zone. There'll be a link in the description of this video. And um, if you use my link and my code, which is all caps, F FGFRC, Fat Guy Flies RC, um, you can take $10 off the price. Now that works either for the ready to fly, which has everything you need, or it also works for the plug and play. Both of them come with a vector system. I suggest getting the plug and play. Um, because if you get the transmitter, the ready to fly, that's the only plane you're gonna be able to fly with that transmitter. And that's a good transmitter, it works great, but then you've only got this plane and only got that transmitter. And you'll have to get an entirely new setup if you wanna get something else. So that's why you get you a good solid transmitter Okay, I highly recommend anything with eight channels or more. Okay, you can get six channels and all that, but just go ahead and give, this is where your big investment is. Go ahead and spend the money and get the better, the bigger, the more expanded transmitter. One that the more than you can afford. Whatever one you can afford, add $100 to it and, and get that one, okay? I like the NX10. I'll probably never have a plane that needs 10 channels, but I've got them if I need it in case. This holds up to 250 models. It might be a goal. I've got 120. <laughs> but uh, this plane controls all the, all the planes you'll ever want in your lifetime. So, all right, folks, y'all have a good one. God bless y'all. And don't forget, faith, family, and friends. Bigfoot. Bye-bye.